As promised, we're going to do a class review for the 2020 Fantasy Star Online 2 Bouncer class. Now let me start off by uh, just uh, addressing some things because some things get addressed but they're in the comment section addressed or we're going to get addressed in the comment section. But I feel like this may be faster just because sometimes complaints or feedback or just people being a dick gets repetitive and they don't know whatever was the problem got addressed. Uh, number one, uh, none of these videos are final, so to speak. So if there's a video you really, really think left out a lot of things you felt were key and they actually were key and important, not just you felt like they were, don't worry about it. There's probably going to be a second pass on everything. However, the hero video gets the primary upgrade, you know, redo, re-edit, blah, 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 blah. We are making an earnest effort to keep these things shortened, even though there is the myth in belief that there is no editing done on these things before we upload them rest assured that almost every video that has ever been made is missing or has about 25 to 45 minutes of cut content for the sake of brevity but this is a work in progress these classes as well as this game is a little bit on the old side so figuring out what should and should not be put in is always a bit of a tr tricky situation but also since we're not making a guide so we have plenty of time to go in and edit and try to whittle things out. Will some things be cut? Absolutely, and I'm not gonna deny that. But please keep in mind, we're trying to get these things down to a set time frame. because even without YouTube statistics, it's a well-known fact that people have decided what classes they will and won't play well before they come to these videos. They just wanna see what they look like once you're further in the game, or they are trying to figure out if they like a class and it doesn't take them a full hour to figure out from watching gameplay and hearing me and various other people talk and gripe and whatnot. Okay, let's get into it. The Bouncer is a very unique class, even though it's one of two classes, or technically, if you stop and think about it, four classes that utilize striking and a magic mixture, it was one of the first to do it. See, the Bouncer is a wondrous sight to behold. It utilizes jet boots, or I like to call them anti-gravity anti -gravity kicking machines, and twin blades as its primary weapons. However, there is a third primary if you stop and think about it, and that is technique, AKA magic. Yes, this class from the ground up is meant to do physical damage and magical damage. Still not sure why there isn't a class that's meant to do long range damage and magical damage. They completely skipped over that stuff, but it is what it is. All right, you know what the weapons are? Let's get into their uh, pros real quick. For the jet boots, let's see, what is a pro? Everything is a pro. And I'm not speaking hyperbolically. The jet boots are good in almost every type of situation you could possibly have. It has the ability to cast shift and deband, which are the attack booster and a defense booster at the end of its photon arts, or well, two of them in particular, after you press the weapon action button. And on top of that, no matter what element you have on the actual weapon, it can be changed based on you utilizing magic through the boots. For example, if I have, which I do, if I have jet boots that are a light element and I go and fight a bunch of light resistant enemies, I'm losing my boon. But let's just say I burn them alive with fire magic two or three times until my gear gauge pops up into the threes. You know what that means? Now all of my normal attacks and my, I believe my photon arts as well, are going to be infused with the fire element and there is no elemental cap too you can change these at will all you got to do is dispel the gauge with a special photon art or you can let the gauges naturally die down back to one uh, or to zero and then use a different element and boom you're using that element as if it was always on the weapon it's really really fun to do and they also slightly increase your range as well also, which is a very unique situation, the weapon action can give you a dash attack and also a three hit combo, and it makes you stall in the air. Now, when I say stall in the air, it means that you won't lose any height until after the animation is over. You won't come, gravity won't kick back in until after the weapon action, combo action, combo action? Oh, nah, that's probably a good name for it. Yeah, we'll say combo action has ended. It's very fun to watch too. Also, Anti-air capabilities rival that of, if not exceed that of the twin daggers on fighter. There is a photon art that is meant to specially home in on enemies once locked in. 
and it doesn't matter if the enemy is on the ground or in the air so even if by some miracle that move doesn't reach the first time you can jump cancel dash cancel or just press the button again and you're going to hit them in the face i guarantee it not to mention once you get there you could let that photon art attack animation play out and switch to twin blades which well they don't have the same homing capabilities but it's also good at staying in the air although it's stalled which means it's, pro it's practically going to just stay in place the whole time another good pro to the jet boots weapon and this is debatable depending on how your teamwork intuition is but that same home into technique i mentioned earlier for the photon arts yeah you can utilize that and control and steer it pretty easily to get across the stage so imagine there's an enemy or a group of players that you want to help out and they're all the way on the other side of the field and the boss spawn there it's very easy for you to get there with minimal effort as long as you're not targeting an enemy or if you think you're going to target an enemy simply switch over into the over the shoulder view for those of you with the controller press the r3 button and you'll simply follow wherever you're trying to get to on the map in a straight line or if you tilt it it'll go in that angle so without a doubt the jet boots are one of the most fun weapons in the game and i'm almost scared to think about what advanced class is going to utilize the jet boots because whoever they are oh my god is it probably going to look cool it's it's so easy for you to evade big maneuvers you can buff up you can heal you can increase defense. I don't know what, I really can't think of any cons for this. Speaking of cons, I don't actually have any other than, and this is a debatable con, the fact that you have to debate between on your weapon action palette, not to be confused with your hotkeys, putting on magic photon arts or having the jet boot on a second slot. <laughs> Excuse me, dealing with hiccups, don't have a cold. I promise I don't have that Rona. Making a second slot of the same weapon with nothing but uh, magical techniques or technique magic like as if they're not universal or nothing but photon arts including the complex art that's the only con i can honestly say for this weapon that's that is it's beautiful it's destructive it's fun now in the case of the twin blades oh my god your ability to hit in both an area of effect in a 360 degree around you based on certain moves also the fact that you have your own homing projectile and a photon art that is also a projectile the twin blades are good in every situation that involves somebody being close to you the downsides to them though the cons it almost has inherently no magical capabilities yes you can use magic while holding the weapon but almost none if not none of the twin blades have any actual technique attack boosting a capabilities they're meant to be strike attack However, that being a con in and of itself depends on the person. So that's subject to change. Other than that, it has less aerial maneuverability, but it can still stay in the air and stall in the air, just like the jet boots. So even though it's a little bit harder for you to go directly up and pinpoint, lock onto something and hit it like the jet boots, you still can stay in the air to dodge low hanging fruit. It can also anti-air basic enemies, because if you try to do it with the twin blades, you're going to burn up a lot more photon art points trying to get in the air and hit them in that location. And then what happens when they move? You got to start from scratch. It's annoying. So, yeah, the, the only true cons to the twin blades is the fact that you may not you may miss the maneuverability that naturally comes with your secondary weapon. And it has absolutely no magical boosting inherent weapons in its uh, weapon catalog, if you will. I'm sure there are some that exist, but. They're very, very low hanging fruit and they're probably extremely low level and low class. Now, as far as the class pros and cons, the class pros are the class itself. This thing is a monster of continuous damage. You can be extremely evasive or stay in the back and hit with very hard hitting magic. You could go up front with both weapons. In fact, utilizing any element that the enemy is weak to, meaning that you're automatically boosting your damage, whether your elemental boost level on the weapon is 60 or not, and on top of it, you have an inherent ability to give support and healing just because you can use Resta, Anti, Shifter, and D-Band all on your weapon as well as the hotkey power. It's a beautiful sight when a bouncer can do their job gracefully. Now, the cons, and again, these fall under the category of subject to debate because first off, I'll almost tell you there are none. But my biggest issue is the hotkey chaos. See, you're a class that has multiple stances, can use all the magic in game minus about five specific technique magics eh, eh. Eh, someone will probably give me shit for that in the comments but you can also put them on the jet boots as well so 
we only get nine slots, zero through nine, or one through nine, then zero is after nine. I don't know why they did that. So if I have anti and resta on my slots, I don't use shift and D bands because my jet, jet boots can use those two techniques. And I got photon arts on my jet boots. So if I put all my stances down there and I got rest and anti, I barely have any magic I can utilize now. Or I gotta have a specific jet boost that is nothing but magic. Or vice versa, I gotta have an entire sub palette that is nothing but magic. That's not a bad thing. You ask any force or any techer, they're used to it. That's why I said that con is up to the person. If you come from a physical attack background, having that much crap could annoy you. And it could mean life or death because remember, this is not a class that can inherently block. So, if you're switching your palette with the hunter, you can hold the block button and maybe dodge something at the last second. I think the minute you go into the palettes, it turns off your blocking ability. And the second con, if you can call it that, is the fact that the twin blades, although very fun and useful and entertaining, they do not give any type of boost to T attack related stats at all. Almost none of the weapons, which I've been looking at, you know, the whole time I've been talking about them via various Google and wikis relating to Fantasy Star Online too. You got one weapon that utilizes the strengths of the class and you got one weapon that's trying to specialize. Not to mention, it also has stand skills as well. Critical field, rapid boost, break stance, element stance, switch strike, all of these, they load up a pallet. They load up your hotkey pallet real quick. And cycling between them could be a minor annoyance or it could be a severe hindrance depending on where you are in the game or how you approach playing the game. But these are cons that are specific to the person's mentality and how they approach the game. So, hey, play the game how you want to. I'm just letting you know, you might get a headache from the pallets. Now, in the case of skill tree opinions, let me just say right now, this is what I like to call a noob nightmare. Holy shit, you thought Braver was bad. Well, Braver had this weapon and that weapon. Bouncer has, do you want to focus on getting your T attack game, your strike attack game? Do you want to focus on getting boons and buffs from the magic you utilize? With these stances, do you want to go down the uh, photon blade section real quick? Do you want to go down the um, jet boot section real quick? Or do you just want to try to play the balance game, meaning that you're pretty much underpowered until you get to like level 70 or something when your skill tree starts balancing it out? The skill tree is an absolute nightmare for noobs, and it really shouldn't be, but we'll discuss that in our later point. The skill tree is meant to make sure that you can utilize everything that relates to the class and do well in it, unlike Gunner. Gunner wants you to only pay attention to the twin machine guns. Let's be honest, that's what it is. So rifle is practically non-existent to that skill tree. Bouncer has the opposite problem. It makes sure you can do well in every category, but the trade-off is, is that the more unique skills that are only on this class, you may have a long time before you get to them, or if you get them first, you're underpowering yourself because now, oh no, I've got low strike attack, I've got low tech attack, and I can't utilize none of the stances that go with my class or supporting the level effects as well because I'm trying to balance everything out. It's a nightmare. I've even had players who played the game from the beta since me just get bouncer curious and they quit after level 40 because they kept, they enjoyed themselves, but they kept getting stressed out and annoyed by the skill tree. And I was like, hey, don't say I told you so because I'll say it for you. I never quit the bouncer though. I, I do enjoy it, but other classes came out, which is why I'm not 95 in it right now. But hey, 80 ain't that bad. Now, as far as who should play this class, as if I didn't already imply it in our next, for this section or segment, whatever you want to call it. The people who should play this class are veterans and masters of not only MMOs necessarily, but specifically the Fantasy Star Online franchise. Because you know what to expect. You've seen how magic classes work. You've seen how strike classes work. Now it's time for you to make that peanut butter and chocolate sandwich like I mentioned and then eat it and get your diabetes like a normal human being. However, let's not be stupid. Who should play this class is sometimes not who will play this class. Didn't I say this was a noob magnet earlier? Noobs are gonna eat this shit up and then they're gonna get sick and put it back in the fridge or on the shelf for a little bit. Who eats food and puts it on a shelf? That came out weird. <laughs> so listen, I know this class looks very cool. In fact, in promotional material or commercial stuff, I'm surprised when this class isn't used because it has a very broad appeal. It looks cool, it is cool, it looks fancy, it is fancy, it can do high damage, it does do high damage. The level of investment a player has to put into this class to master it is high. 
But once you do, almost nothing else in the game, class-wise, will ever get on your nerves again. Maybe Summoner, but we don't talk about Summoner. So please keep in mind that veterans, you may fall in love with this and have a skill tree headache, but hey, there are builds out there, and yes, I've heard the cries as well. We will link to more skill builds later on in the description or the comments. Just please keep this disclaimer in mind. They may be outdated or they may have only been good at the time of this recording. Use them wisely and don't blame me for nothing. It's on you if you use them. But noobs will have fun with this class, but they may soon realize that their damage is not anywhere near that of their peers, even if they're the same level. Obviously, a fixing can mitigate a lot of that stuff, but at the same time, your level of abilities and features you can use as a bouncer can range drastically. I could be level 50, and I can go and get all the special skills and techniques that are meant for a bouncer, but my natural damage output is lower than average, and the other guy could have his high damage output because he specialized only with one weapon, only with one form of uh, attack boosting, and be okay, but then he can't do anything else. You know, play the game how you want to play. This is not a guide, but I'm sure someone in the comments will say it's a guide. I think we've gotten used to it at this point, me and Dylan and, like, Gabby and the rest. We know y'all gonna say it's a guide. I just stopped caring. So, yeah, veterans, you'll fall in love. Masters, you may get annoyed, but you'll love it. Noobs, I'm sorry, but you're still gonna find it fun. But I'm really sorry, though. As far as our next segment, skill rings go. All right, now, this is actually a bit of a sweet spot. All right, so... Fairly recently, we've had new rings added and modifications done. Now, I'm pretty sure it goes without saying, I'll say it to the, to, to, to the end of my day, some of the best rings you can put on all your classes are the critical rings because they don't just increase how often you do criticals, they increase the damage level, oh, I'm sorry, the damage percentage of the critical. They found a way to not have the player have to switch those rings every class type. They put them all in one ring, which they should have been done a long time ago. So now there's just critical ring. Now this crit ring, first off, you have to level up all the previous rings I mentioned. The strike attack ring, the technique attack ring, and the range attack ring to the maximum level and then merge them down. You can kiss the buffs on them goodbye, but eh, they weren't that high anyway. Now what's going to happen is every time you do a critical or your critical frequency and damage increases, no matter what type of weapon or class you have. So it may even be a good idea to keep this ring on, make sure that it's updated to include this ring. It is a godsend. They should have done it a long time ago. Also, another sleeper ring this time though, the keeper ring. Keeper strike, keeper range, keeper tech. I bet you they're gonna make an all keeper ring eventually, but for this one, we'll say keeper technique. Keeper tech rig ring. Now let's do a quick reminder. As long as you say above 75% of your main, your, uh, HP level you get a damage increase well guess what if you are the type of bouncer that primarily attacks with magic you're not going to be standing directly in the enemy's face that much are you yes there are a few enemy there are a few moves that are good for mobs you might get a little close but you're not trying to sit there and wail on them the normal attack button means nothing to you basically this ring is guaranteeing the damage increase and if you have something like ET just for example as a sub with that ungodly skill treat you could get smacked around by some of the hardest techniques in the game at in-game bosses or in-level bosses and still have that ring be active without you needing to heal yourself it is a sight to behold when a bouncer can do their job wonderfully and gracefully and fatally now as far as and uh, the final right ring i will say is quick mate asterisk on that quick mate is if you don't value any of the technique based magic stuff so if you have Resta and you know you don't care about it because you came to hit things up close, Quick Mate lets you go through the animation sequence for all of your uh, mate related things at double the speed if not more. So if it takes you 8 seconds to drink a Trimate, imagine it going down to 4 seconds or less. Sorry Bravers, you can't use it, but to be fair it's already on your skill tree. Now as far as left rings, well, let's go with the Holy Trinity real quick. Party of Toughness. The more people in your party, the more defense reduction you get. Mate Lover and Moon, Atom and Moon Atomizer Lover. We've mentioned them a billion times, but yo, they work. And remember guys, if it's a left ring, you can also infuse these into your armors. So don't worry about having to run around with all these rings. 
worry about leveling up and grinding one weapon and one ring that's on the left max at a time and if you know you're going to use it put it in your armor i prefer universal rings in my armor just because they're going to work on every single class however and this is one of those cases there are class specific left rings that you might want to use into your armor for instance in the case of a uh, bouncer there's a ring called pb homing no it's not peanut butter photon blade homing changes how your photon blade weapon action works with your twin blades so if you love that weapon to death this this is your friend it turns him it gives him the ability to home but the trade-off is they don't do reduced damage just so you know it takes longer way 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 longer for them to get to an enemy because they float above you they stay there for about four seconds dart off to an enemy it, that's just how it is so that that ring that's for the striker in you if you're a bouncer but you don't care about magic pb homing is fun now with that being said uh the next segment is high synergy class mix now the way high synergy class mixes work is kind of sort of uh fun as hell for the bouncer let's say for example you're a veteran player you got a couple of classes near maximum level or maximum level if you know you don't care about magic, or I like to, we'll call you a strike bouncer. You can put Hunter or ET, oh, sorry, Etoile as your subclass. Because every single stand skill, I think except for one or two, on the skill tree for Hunter, does not, is not main class only. So it'll synergize directly into everything you're doing. Oh, you want to boost up your damage just by doing continuous just attacks? Fam, Hunter got you. You want to do a damage increase because of Fury? Hunter got you. It, it's insane how much you can pull off. And don't forget, just because Jet Boots is Strike and Tech does not mean that it doesn't gain anything from this because all of that Strike you get can go into the Twin Blades and also the Boots. It doesn't discriminate. Another good one, Etoile. Again, for the strike, uh, for the strike bouncer. Besides the fact that you get that damage, that super high damage uh, nerfing situation going on in your skill tree, you're looking at potentially being able to make sure that you reduce how much it costs for photon points wise, magic or you know photon art, how much it costs to do continuous things because on this ET skill tree. The ability to reduce the amount of photon points utilized in doing a repetitive technique and having a decrease is not a main is not a main class only ability. Well, now, who knows? You might be able to get a fourth or a fifth one out, especially if you combine it with a photon drink before you go into the mission. There is nothing but net gain when you have ET as a sub. But for you force lovers, or we'll call you a uh, tech bouncers. For you tech bouncers, as if it wasn't obvious, yes, force is like one of the end-all, be-all subs. It's just going to boost up your damage. And if it's an element that there are boosts and boons for in the skill tree of the force, you're just going to gain that much more from it. It goes without saying. But again, now you're hindering your capabilities with strike because there's no rollover. However, my two personal favorites to go with bouncer, Tekker and Phantom. Tekker is just bouncer, but with strike defense. It's more of the same. There's less maneuverability and whatnot, but it kind of doesn't matter because, remember, Tekker's the sub. So the primary things you're dealing damage with are the boots and the blades. Period. Now, that being said, holy shit, phantom, sub, bouncer, main. The boofs. You don't hear that name a lot because most people type it, but the boofs are a genuine delight. Whenever I see them in a party... I get a little bit giddy, I'm not gonna lie. They're hard to find, but they are fun to fuck with. Listen, there's a special ability on the Phantom Tree that I mentioned in the old Phantom video. Remember, if you lower the amount of damage, you can increase how quickly you can do your strongest, aka your charged up technique magic moves, right? Well, now imagine having that with one or two orb maxed out, and then having Bouncer as your main. Now, the most dangerous moves in the entire technique library, minus, of course, the fused, the fused techniques, uh, photon spells or photon disc, sorry, are now coming out of you 
way, way faster. And let's not forget, or rather, let's remember the stance skill on the skill tree called Rapid Boost. It increases how quickly you can pull off a charged move temporarily, but it's got a long cooldown. It lasts for 60 seconds at max, 120 second cooldown at the end of it. Let's just say you happen to stack these two. So now you have, we'll say you invested one level into the uh, quick magic skill option on the skill tree for Phantom and you got rapid boost turned on. Pick the biggest, longest, most annoying spell to conjure out of your whole entire list. Now imagine it coming out 50%, maybe 30%, 40% faster, doesn't matter. Yeah, it's insane. That is insane. So then at that point, it's another layer of technicality. Do you want to get a bunch of affixes on everything you have to try to mitigate the damage loss from maxing out the uh, quick magic ability that's on the skill tree, which name escapes me? Or do you want to go and legitimately sit around and just dump magic and dunk magic on enemies until they're nothing but blood and dust by and still only invest a little bit in it but not lose that much as far as you know technique stuff goes and still be able to affix i know people who specifically gain the ability or uh, bought a second skill tree for their uh for their phantom just to have one version where that skill is maxed out and one version where there's only one piece invested into it and my first thought was bro if you went and experimented with a bouncer as a main you could probably be a nightmare. If Tekker Phantom is insane, what do you think is going to happen with a bouncer with a rapid boost and that charge reduction skill tree item? It's insane to think about. You feel how you feel. Play the game how you want to, guys. Uh, look forward in the description to others' opinions and whatnot on how to, you know, go about building your classes. And of course, the skill tree builds are going to be in the description as well for those who don't want to just go through the video. I, I get it. Maybe you ain't got enough time and whatnot. Also, just so we're clear, uh, <laughs> I don't know how many times this needs to be said, but um, this is not a one-man show. So when you guys direct things at the comments to me that I can't answer because I'm not the one who came up with it, I just repeated it. Uh, sorry, I can't give you a direct answer. Sometimes I just can't find that person by the time your comment shows up. So, uh, yeah, please keep in mind that, you know, this is not a solo operation. So if you got a question, don't just direct them at me, Zags, because I don't know everything and I've never pretended to. I'll answer what I can or I'll try to have somebody else in the squad answer what they can. And, you know, keep it civil and we'll more than likely make sure it gets seen or at least acknowledged in some way, shape or form. All right. That being said, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this new shorter format, you know. We edited it down as much as we could. The original runtime for this was something along an hour, 15 minutes. And uh, yeah, um, I'm sure there will be complaints. I fully expect that. But hey, it is what it is. See you around, guys.